Hi there, I'm Jen, this is Remembered Reads, and this is going to be the finance book tag. I was tagged by Brian from Bookish, and this tag was created by David Murphy, and I will link to both of their channels below. I apologize for the squeaking in the background, my dog is making noises at a bird, and there's construction in the background, so. But they're also birds, and I feel like it's worth it just for that. This tag has some awesomely long prompts, so I think this will be fun. Prompt number one. Diversification is the averaging out of independent risks in a large portfolio. Hold up a few books that we wouldn't expect to find on your shelves. Now because I'm outside, I'm not going to hold them up, but I'll insert something. Uh, I recently realized that I have a John Le Carre novel in the Italian translation, which I imagine I must have taken from my parents' house. And I, it must have been my father's because my father doesn't speak Italian. And I don't feel like my father ever really read Italian. It was like his ninth language and he only used it at work. So I don't really know why we had it, and I don't know why I have it, but I do. So I'm surprised that I have it, so I'm sure other people would be surprised too. Number two is past results are not indicative of future outcomes. Tell us about a book or author you disliked or were indifferent about on the first reading, but gave a second chance and ended up liking. And this is a bit of a fake answer, but I read an edited down children's version of Oliver Twist when I was a child, and so I always said I was not a fan of that, just because I had read this cut-down version. But I read the actual book later, and it was fine. Um, I'm still not the hugest fan, but I wouldn't say that I'd dislike it anymore. That sounds like it would be a negative on children's, abu children's abridged versions, but I'm actually not as against those as I think some people are. Question number three is the effect of earning interest on interest is known as compound interest. Name a book that has aged remarkably well, or a book that gets better each time you read it. Well, I reread All Quiet on the Western Front every year, sometimes twice a year, and I feel like I continue to get the same satisfaction out of it now that I did at 15. Whether that's still going to be true for other people who are not necessarily First World War buffs who maybe have a different amount of weird nostalgia for that kind of thing, I don't know. For me, yeah, it still, it still works for me on rereading. Number four is the ratio of current assets to liabilities. So a ratio of one means current assets equal current liabilities. If current assets are the books in your library you have read and current li liabilities are the books you have not read, is your current ratio above or equal to one? This is interesting because it depends on how I would define my library. Because I'm currently uh, clearing out a lot of my parents' stuff, which means that the books that are with me in this house are not necessarily mine. So for example, I have been recycling stacks of old Canadian mining journals, which I've never read. So are those books that I have that I haven't read? Or on the flip side, are my books which are in storage elsewhere, um, the books that I actually own? I got rid of a lot of books that I either wasn't interested in reading or thought I can get this out of a library, I don't need to own it. So a lot of the books that I have in storage are books that I've read, but if I don't have access to them now, are they my library? I don't know the answer to that because the answer is significantly different depending on how I qualify my library. Number five, familiarity bias is the tendency of investors to favor investments in companies they are familiar with. What is a book you go back to out of familiarity? Um, I feel like I used this book already in my, when I used All Quiet on the Western Front earlier. So I'm going to go with the graphic novel, The Authority Human on the Inside, which is not a particularly in character take on the particular comic book characters that are in that, but I've always been such a fan of the art style and the package and the way it kind of flows that it doesn't matter to me that it's not the best story or the best version of pre-existing characters. So I think it kind of fails as a franchise book, but as a product on its own I find it very enjoyable and comforting and familiar to go back and flip through it. Number six, investors are always seeking alpha seeking a non-zero difference between a stock's expected return and its required return. What is an underrated book or a book that should be well, more well known but isn't? This is an answer that I give in a lot of tags, so I feel like it's repetitive, but I'm gonna say it again, and that's uh, K. Sellodyker's The Quiet Violence of Dreams, which at the time that it was published seemed to be fairly well known amongst South Africans at least, and was made into a play, and at one point there was an award named after him that has since been um, done away with, but but it just seems to have disappeared. Now the author killed himself shortly after writing that book before his third novel was published, 
and he's kind of disappeared from a lot of the discourse. It's very difficult to find this book now, and I think it's a shame that it's not better known and that people aren't reading it and talking about it more, because I think there's a lot going on there that's quite interesting. Number seven, a derivative is a security, the payoff of which depends solely on the prices of other marketed assets. Tell us about a book that you thought was derivative. Well, I think almost everything that sits in the mystery whodunit and the very classic genre romance, especially category romances, sit on a very specific framework which is derivative of everything that came before them. Now I don't think that's a bad thing in those cases because I think people go into both of those genres with certain expectations of you are getting something that sits on that framework and you're just looking at the things that they plug into it. So to say that those genres are highly derivative is both absolutely true but not insulting to either genre because Innovation is not something that every genre needs or that every reader is necessarily looking for, at least all the time. So, yeah. Number eight. A share repurpose is when a company uses cash to buy back its own stock. Tell us about a book that you own too many copies of. Somebody's mowing their lawn. All right, we need to finish this quickly. Well, I have three copies of Black Beauty and two copies, no, three copies of Moby Dick. So I think those are probably the ones because I have both mass market paperbacks that I owned as a child, uh, mass market paperbacks that I read when I was somewhat older because I didn't have the books with me and they were in my parents' house, and then I have hardcover copies of both because they are favorites of mine, so I bought fancier copies. Uh, I also have multiple copies of uh, the Warren Ellis Brian Hitch run on The Authority, the original 12 issues of that, because I have that in the floppies in the original trade, and then I bought the absolute uh, hardcover edition of that as well. So those three things. Uh, number nine is the Federal Reserve is the lender of last resorts. What is a book your mom or dad bought for you? And uh, this isn't really a book that they bought for me, but my grandparents bought my father a, a set of these leather bound editions of Tintin back in the mid 80s. And when my father died, I kind of, I didn't technically inherit them, but I have appropriated them as my own. So those are great. I'll insert a picture of them or something here. Number 10 is tag people. Um, I'm gonna tag Celia because I realized recently that she tagged me in a tag, the crystal tag, uh, almost a year ago last May and I still haven't done it. So I'm gonna try to get to that in a week or two, but in the meantime, I'm tagging Celia. Yeah, and as always, if you are watching this and think these are the best tag questions you've ever seen, you need to do this tag too, because I do think these are kind of hilarious. All right, that's it for now. Ciao.